Hey everyone, what's up? Mirai here with a video that's going to show you how to install and use and slightly customize that keyboard overlay that I've been teasing and showing off over the past few videos prior to this one. So this is kind of a two-part video. First part is just going to show you how to install it and use it and get it up and running and just good to go. You can just leave from there. The second section, I don't know why I'm pointing over here, but it must be somewhere over there. The second section is going to show how to kind of customize it. You'll see what I mean by kind of customize it when we get there. So first and foremost, there's going to be a download link in the description of this video. There may be multiple download links in the description of this video. So choose wisely. Most of them will lead to, I'm kidding, all of them are going to lead to this keyboard overlay dot zip file. The icon may look a little bit different on your computer. That's perfectly fine. Not a big deal. Just go ahead and extract this bad boy anywhere you want. Personal preference is up to you. Extract it somewhere. You're going to get this folder. You're going to open this up. You're going to see three files and another folder. Folder section. So we're going to look in here. There's images in here as well, some PSD files. And before I even get started, now that I'm just pointing this out, there is a keyboard overlay XML file here and there is a keyboard overlay XML file here. They are entirely different files. Do not mix these up. And this one in here, this one right here, should not move out of this folder. This folder is going to move as one whole piece to another location. This all just stays put in here. This one is entirely different. So without further ado, let's get this tutorial started, shall we? It begins now. So open up your inner space folder wherever that may be, and open up the scripts folder, open up the init session, which is initialize session folder. This is going to be completely empty for you. So don't even worry that I've got like stuff in here. You're going to take this keyboard overlay to ISS file. You're going to drag this in here. You're going to drop it in there. I'll just copy over mine just to show you guys that I don't have anything. I don't have anything special going on that I'm not sharing with you guys. So it's, it's the same, it's the same files uh, back. Go back one level to the scripts folder, then open up the ISBox or images folder. I don't know what's going to be in here for you guys. You guys may have something in here. You guys may have nothing in here. It doesn't really matter. What's important is that we take this keyboard overlay folder and we drag it and drop it in there. That's one step I'm actually not going to do. Although it's going to look like this, right? It's going to look, um, you're going to have the same images, the XML file and these PSD files. So now come back to your inner space folder the base of it. And we need to put this keyboard overlay.xml file somewhere. This is a custom menu template. And while you can just leave this on your desktop or you can do, you can put this wherever you want. Um, I like to put my inner space stuff in my inner space folder. So what I've done is I've created this templates folder and inside of it, I've got a bunch of custom menu templates that I've just kind of saved over the years of multi-boxing and uh, using this program. So this is where I put all my custom menu templates. I'm gonna drag this in, I'm gonna copy and replace it. Fantastic. So everything's been copied. All, these, uh, all this stuff has been copied where it needs to be. This is a text file, big surprise. You can open this in Notepad and it's going to look like raw text. And that's exactly what it is. We're gonna be copying a lot of this, um, this code out of here and pasting it into IS Boxer. But because Notepad is uh, not the prettiest program, I'm going to open this up in my own program called Notepad++. Put it there and we're going to come back to this in a moment. Now the next step is for you to open up IS Boxer, open up the profile you want to customize. I've got mine right here. And in the upper left pane, click on any menu or any click bar for that matter. And in the lower left pane, you'll see this images global right here. Right click on that, go to load image set XML file, and then navigate to the folder that you dragged in with all the images, right? So that should be in scripts and ISBox or images and keyboard overlay. Now, what you're looking to import is this XML file. This is going to tell ISBoxer that um, all of these images exist. It's going to give it the path and everything. So just you're done. You just double click it, you open it, you're done. At the bottom, you'll see an image set called keyboard overlay and boom, there's a bunch of images in here already 
listed and loaded in and ready to go. Fantastic. Now, we are doing this in a specific order. This is this kind of has to be done this way in order to make it um, it's the simplest way to do things. You just have to trust me. So load the image set in first. Then we can uh, bring this text file back up and you'll see all these equal signs and you'll see this do not copy this line. What this really means is that you should not copy that line. What I've done is I've created these barriers, these borders between where one section ends and where another section begins because there's three different sections in here that we need to copy. So there's three different things. There's, there's a menu, there's a menu template, and there's a button set. And we need to do this in order from top to bottom. So what I'm going to do is start here. I'm going to click right there. You can see the flashing cursor. I'm going to scroll down. Where does it end? Where does it end? Where does it end? Oh, it ends right here with all these equal signs, right? So I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to click at the end and it's going to automatically select all of this big chunk of text. So you can see, man, there's a lot of text there. So it stops here, starts at the top, right? Control C or right click copy at this point, come back into IS Boxer, and it is a button set, which means we will be right clicking on button set and you'll see paste button set from clipboard. Now, if you don't see this, that's a problem that probably means that you've miscopied the text from this file. Uh, potentially, I don't know, maybe you fat fingered something or it didn't actually copy. Um, otherwise, you may have opened this text file in a program that may have messed up the formatting, maybe Microsoft Word or uh, even like LibreOffice. Uh, I think that's what the other one is called. Um, if you open it in those programs, it could potentially mess up the formatting. So that's why I just suggest opening it in Notepad if you got it, or Notepad++, or Sublime Text, I think is another nice uh, kind of code text editor type thing. Something that will not mess up the formatting. Or you may actually be right-clicking on something that's not correct. So if you right-click on menu templates, you don't see a paste option down here because this isn't a menu template, this is a button set. So right click on button sets, paste button set from clipboard. There it is, 31 buttons. And the reason we did the image set first is because all of these buttons are preloaded with the images that they're supposed to have already. So if you load in the button set first and you don't have the image set loaded, these buttons are gonna be looking for images that don't exist. And sometimes when that happens, if you don't load the image set in soon enough, you could potentially, um, these just get, they, they just get deleted. Every, every entry out of here gets deleted and that's three images per button, 31 buttons, 93 entries that you're gonna have to go back through and pick images out of. So in order to avoid that, import the button set first. <laughs> don't import the button set first. Import the image set first and then the button set. Man, I'm on a roll. So after the button set, whoops, come on down here to the second section. I'm gonna click here. I don't know what that is. We're gonna click here. We're gonna highlight this second section. We're gonna right click. We're gonna copy. This is a menu template. And we'll come to the menu template word here. We'll right click on it. We'll paste menu template from the clipboard. There it is, just like that. Now um, I'm gonna talk about some stuff here real fast. This is a XML custom file. And what that means is that, I mean, you see these fields and they're all grayed out. You're like, how do I edit this stuff? How do I, how do I customize this stuff? Normally it's customizable. Well, because it's a custom XML file, these fields, these properties are all being uh, set or defined in the XML file itself. We'll go over that in the customization section. Remember part two is over there. Um, we'll go over that in the second half of this video. But for now, just that's why everything's grayed out. Don't panic or anything. You don't need to change anything. There's 31 buttons here already. And um, unless you wanna change the transparency of it, that's up to you. Uh, what you will need to change though is the Lavish GUI XML file name. Now this is probably gonna import on your computer with my path, or it might not even uh, import a path at all because this doesn't exist for you. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to click this little navigation button and you're gonna to have to find wherever you put that keyboard overlay XML file that I talked about that it was a custom menu template. Remember, I put mine in the templates folder that I created in my inner space folder. So keyboard overlay.xml right here, it was already set that way. Now, if the XML element is blank for whatever reason, it should not be blank. 
But if it is, this is what needs to go there. Keyboard underscore overlay. This is case sensitive, capital K, capital O, keyboard underscore overlay. I'll even, I'll even write it on the screen. This has to be perfect or else it's not gonna work. With that said, let's come in here and copy the final portion of this uh, text. Now this is, a, this is the menu itself. So we come up to the upper left pane, we right click on menus and we do paste menu from clipboard, it'll close, it'll refresh, we reopen it, there it is. It's gonna have the menu template populated, it's gonna have the button set populated, and it's gonna have a starting position of zero, zero, which is your upper left-hand corner of your game client. Now the hotkey set is blank, and you will leave it blank, otherwise you're gonna run into some problems. That's, um, remember the, the ISS file that we copied into scripts in the initialized session folder, this ISS file right here is essentially the hotkey set for this menu. If you set a hotkey set in IS Boxer, it's going to block the keys that you want to use. Um, that's all I can really say about that. But what the, what the ISS file allows us to do is transparently tie the keys on our keyboard that are specified within the ISS file to this menu without blocking them. So rather than having to turn off key maps every time you want to use the keys, you know, um, you don't have to, right? It just, it uses the keys, it ties them to the menu, but the menu doesn't do anything except just kind of animate. So if that all makes sense. But now that that's all in place, I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to minimize this, get all this out of the way. You just need to put this on your character set. You just need to attach this, attach this to your character set. So there's two ways to do this. You can click, hold and drag the menu with your, with your character set selected, you click, hold, and drag the menu, you drag it down to the bottom left-hand pane, you release the mouse, boom, there it is. Alternatively, you can, with your character set selected, you can just click on the menus uh, section down here, and you can just enable it or, dis uh, or disable it this way as well. So now with that done, I'm going to export, and we're going to load this up. Probably take a minute. I'm going to take a swig of water. Maybe two swigs. Okay, where is it? And there it is. It's in the upper left-hand corner. Fantastic. And I can type, and it reflects the keys that I'm pressing just as it should right out of the box. There's nothing special you need to do. If for some reason it is not doing this, um, again, it comes down to this ISS file being in place. Now, obviously I tested this with my computer and another computer and I use a US layout. So maybe, just maybe a European layout, a different layout um, keyboard may somehow conflict with this. Although, um, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, if there is a problem, obviously you need to come find help. You need to find me or find Lax, preferably Lax because um, he wrote most of this stuff and I just copied and pasted it. <clears throat> but um, this is just a, a, this is a normal menu. So you can just open up the, you know, open up the in-game control panel and just kind of move it around where you want. And uh, you can then save all menu positions and this will save it in its current spot for this character set, but only this character set. Now, um, what I suggest doing is instead of using it and instead of dragging this around and figuring out where it, uh, where it needs to go, you set the starting position in the menu itself. So right, so right now it has a starting position of the upper left-hand corner, but if I set this to like 400 by 400 and I just export, it's going to move to 400 by 400. So figure out where you want it on the screen. You know, it doesn't matter how many times you need to guess at the number here, just continue to export and it will continue to move around until you get it right. And then when the keyboard um, overlay is attached to a new character set in the future, it'll be in the same spot. So you won't have to keep screwing around with trying to sync settings and this and that. It'll all just start out where it needs to be. Now, this is pretty much it. I mean, at this point, you're good to go. The keyboard uh, overlay is obviously working as it should. and. Um, that's it. It's installed. It's ready to go. You're ready to play. You're ready to impress your friends. 
and uh, everyone else. That, like, you know, you don't have to multibox with this. This isn't a multiboxing specific thing. This is something cool you could use in a stream or something. If you launch a game client through, uh, some people play solo with their own game clients because they like to remap keys and whatnot in Iceboxer and Interspace allows them to do that. So you can just launch a, a single character set and um, use the overlay that way, streaming, doing whatever. So have fun with that. Thanks for watching. But if you want to customize, continue watching and we'll cover some customization stuff in the second half. Okay, so we're gonna customize some stuff. This is very limited. It's pretty limited because it's kind of tedious and well, the keyboard overlay, I mean, I kind of just designed it for myself, but I can share it and then I can kind of show you how to customize it. Or you can start from scratch once you understand how I've done it, then you can start from scratch with your own stuff. Now, um, this is, it sort of requires Photoshop, at least what I've shared. If you want to customize what I've got, I, those PSD files, I'll be editing one of those and showing how to edit one of those. But it's required to have Photoshop in order to open one of those. So if you don't have Photoshop, you're going to need to probably start from scratch with your own image editing program of choice. GIMP is uh, the name of an image editing program, which is free. Uh, a lot of people use it in alternative to Photoshop, but this, while it requires Photoshop, this is not necessarily like a Photoshop tutorial of any sort. Now, uh, custom menu templates and the ISS file also uh, contain lavish script, which is the code that Innerspace runs off of. So, um, or at least works with Innerspace. So uh, I am definitely not the person to talk to about lavish script. As I mentioned just previously, uh, a minute or two ago that uh, Lax is the one who wrote this thing for the most part, and I just kind of, you know, copied and pasted, copied and pasted, copied and pasted for all the buttons I needed. And then I took credit for it and um, felt guilty. So I figured I'd let him have the credit now in this video. With that said, um, let's switch out a button and then I'll show you after this how to change up the scale because right now, I mean, I obviously created this for myself. I play at sort of like a 1440-ish resolution. If you play at 4K or anything larger than 1440, or if you play at 1080, which is smaller than 1440, the size is gonna be different. The, the uh, menu is gonna change sizes. So. I'll show you how to scale some things up, although that's kind of tedious too, and <laughs> you'll see, you'll see. So um, let's, uh, let me close this first because that's gonna bother me. Let's come in here. Oh, I was already kind of in the right folder. So come into the images folder, the keyboard overlay, and you'll see that I've got these PSD files here. Again, they're Photoshop uh, files, and they're broken up into the sizes of the um, buttons. So the 1.0 keys are all the the letters and the numbers and the accent mark. 1.25 is the control and the alt down here and the what would be Windows key, but I've, I've blanked that out. I don't have that in the overlay. Um, 1.25 is tab, 1.7, uh, 1.5, no. <laughs> 1.5 is tab, 1.75 is caps lock. 2.25 is shift. Now, if you're, if you're changing this over to say like a European layout or uh, probably some Asian keyboard layouts, uh, have this as well. The shift is smaller, so it's no longer 2.25. So you'll have to figure out how big your shift key is and then modify it from there. And then um, obviously 4.0 is the space bar down here. Space bars in real life are bigger than 4.0, but because I'm only showing a portion of it, it's only 4.0. So what am I gonna change? Um, let's just change the H key, what would be the H key. Uh, let's make it the accent mark. I'll show how to switch these two out here. So we'll open this up because it's a 1.0 key. I'll zoom in and you'll see that I've, uh, this is the biggest PSD file. It's got the most um, organization. The rest of them are kind of lackluster, although they're not really not all that difficult to figure out because there's maybe like seven or eight layers total in the other ones. This one has, you know, a lot of layers in it, so I kind of had to break it up to make it more understandable. Now, uh, every button has three states. You know, you've got the, the idle, the white state as it is now, and then you've got the mouse over state, which isn't necessary, but I figured it would give a nice touch to the, uh, to the overlay because if you mouse over it, you know, it reacts to the mouse. Otherwise, it just stays in its white idle state. And then, of course, you've got the, um, you know, the, the active pressed state. So with that, I've got the green stuff here. 
I've got the gray stuff here, the mouse over, and we've got the normal uncolored white section. So we're gonna change accent mark to Z. Uh, the font I've used for all the letters and the numbers is tech, not a standard Windows font. If you wanna customize this stuff, you're gonna to have to find it and download it. I'm sure it's free somewhere on the internet. Um, the accent mark is not tech, it is Verdana. That is a standard Windows font. Uh, I think I did this because the accent mark for tech sucked and um, I wanted something that looked more like an accent mark. So I just went with Verdana, something standard. And uh, since we're going to make making this an H, I'm just going to copy a letter, change this to an H, and that's it. I mean, we're done with the pressed, the green state of the key, right? So Control Shift S in Photoshop is to save as. We're gonna make this a PNG file. You can see the way that I've got this all labeled and laid out already. So um, for every single key, it has a, uh, just a normal, this is the white state, the idle state. You have the MO, which is the mouse over state, and you've got the P, which is the pressed state. So we're doing the green key for this, uh, for this one. So we're gonna make a pressed state. And I'm just going to, I, I click on it so that I can have the naming scheme kind of written out for me already, and I just change this to an H, right? Okay, so we're done with that. We can come up here, we can collapse this, turn that off. We can turn this on. And uh, the Z is already on, so we'll just copy the Z, make this an H, and we're done with the mouse over state. So again, save as, come down to PNG, pick uh, something that has a mouse over state, and then just rename it to an H. So H mouse over, collapse, turn off, and uh, doesn't. Um, actually, it does matter kind of what you copy. The one isn't centered, so if you're going to copy a letter, maybe. Um, you should use a letter to copy a letter. Just say it. Um, we'll make this an H, and we're done with that. So another save as. Come down to PNG, and just pick whatever, and make it an H. And we're done with that. So now we have our H key. If we look in here, here's the, the white idle state, here's the gray mouse over state, and here's the pressed P state, the green state. Um, with that, we can come back into IS Boxer, and we're gonna to need to import these images in. Um, because it's part of the keyboard overlay image set, I like to just add them into the image set. You don't have to. You can right click on Images Global and go to New Image and add them as their own images, but because it's part of the image set, I'm just gonna add them as into the image set itself. So, scripts, IS Boxer images, keyboard overlay. Here's our three H keys. Now, you don't have to add them one at a time. This is in any other Windows navigation folder where you can click on something, hold control, and click on several things at once, or click on something, hold shift, and select an entire range of uh, images to add. So I'm just gonna add these three all at once, hit open, and they appear all the way at the bottom. Now they do appear with the extensions on them. Uh, personally, I pull the extensions off of them. It's just, uh, it doesn't affect the image at all, but it just, in my opinion, makes it look a little bit cleaner. So I do that. Um, and we can come up to the button set. And we're changing the accent mark to B to H. Let's come all the way down to the bottom. H, and then the mouse over state, and then the pressed state. So that's why, that's why I name them with the MO and the P. You can see background pressed, background mouse over, and then just regular background. So it kind of make, just makes sense. They just kind of go together, right? Right. That's exactly what I thought. So we just changed that, we're good to go. We can just straight up export from here. And now we've got an H in the upper left hand corner here. Now, however, when I press H, it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. Well, this is terrible. However, accent mark was there before. And if we press accent mark, well, the H works. At least we know the H works, but it's not tied to the H key. So how do we fix that? Well. Remember I said that the, the hot key set was that ISS file. So come back to your scripts folder, come into the initialize session folder, and open up this ISS file in any text editor. It's the same thing. It's all just uh, straight up plain text for the most part. But this is it's more lavish script in here. Um, and you can kind of see the way it's laid out. So case, uh, accent mark, case one, case two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, there's no six, four, five. And then it goes to the next you know, the next um, row, which would be tab QWERT. And it just goes on the list, goes down the list from there. Whoops. So we're changing the accent mark 
to an H. We just delete the accent mark, change it to the H. It's already coinciding with button number one. These are the button numbers as they appear in the button set in IS Boxer. So that's that. We've changed it to an H. We can hit save. We come back in here and um, H is still not working, but accent mark is still tied to H. Now, in order to refresh, um, in order for that ISS file to take effect, you either need to sh completely shut down the game client and relaunch it, um, f do a fresh launch of the character set itself. Uh, merely relaunching the character set with it already running is not going to fix the problem. So you have to shut it down and completely relaunch it. Otherwise, if you're fancy and you know your way around the IS, uh, the inner space console, you can do an end script in its session slash keyboard underscore overlay dot ISS. There's no confirmation that the script was ended. However, if I start typing, you'll see that the keyboard is no longer responding to my keyboard. So in order to, to reboot that, we do a run in its session slash keyboard underscore overlay dot ISS. Hit enter. There's no confirmation again that that was successfully run, but we come back into the game and we can see that the keys once again are working. However, here's the test. Did we fix the H? There's accent mark. H is not being highlighted. However, if I press H, it is now working, right? You don't have to be fancy. You don't have to use the Interspace console. I just wanted to show off and flex a little bit in front of everyone that I know two commands in the Interspace console. The easy way to do it is just shut down the game clients and relaunch the character set. That's all you need to do. Now, let's scale this bad boy up a little bit. Um, we have to open up, find wherever you put that custom menu template. Again, my templates are in my templates folder, keyboard overlay. And as always, these are all just text files, so you can open them in any text editor. And it's in, it's in plain text, <laughs> uh, but if you don't know lavish script, it's not as plain as it might sound. So uh, again, the element, remember the element, I, I, I made a big, uh, a big deal about this, that the element needs to match perfectly. If for some reason you've completely forgotten what the, what the element name should be in IS Boxer, and like the first half of this video is completely ruined, this is where the element name is stored. It's stored in the custom menu template itself. So there's also some other notes down here. Lax may have helped put this together, you know, whatever. Now, like I said, this isn't a lavish script tutorial, but I'm gonna kind of touch on this a little bit. If you really, really need some help with this, if you really wanna start customizing your own stuff like this, your own uh, menus and, and whatnot, um, I would say come find me and I can help you, but I don't know this stuff. And like I said, Lax wrote most of this. So you're gonna to come to me and I'm gonna say, go find Lax. So you might as well just skip me altogether and just go find Lax. He loves it when I refer everyone to him directly anyway. So with, <laughs> sorry, man. <clears throat> so uh, in this particular template, there's um, every button is, um, most of the buttons are 40 by 40. So what we do is we set this template here at the top. Don't, um, don't change any of the on mouse and on left click stuff. And don't change, uh, in fact, don't touch any of this. <laughs> this is stuff that needs to be there apparently. This is what I've been told in the past. I got my hand slapped for touching some of this stuff. So don't touch any of this. Um, but what we essentially do is we set a width and a height and we have a template up here called overlay button. And then you can see down here that all of these buttons themselves, they're tied to the template called overlay button. So we don't need to continually redefine the width and the height for every single button. However, not every single button has a width of 40. Obviously the modifiers and the space bar are, are um, you know, wider than 40. So what do we do then? Well, if you, if you define a width on a particular button, this width here is going to override what the template has. So we're only defining the width here, which means it's still gonna use the height defined in this overlay button. So it's gonna use a height of 40 and it's gonna have a width of 160. You guys following me? It's not really important to what we're doing here, but I just wanted to touch on what this stuff is here at the top, this, this template that we've got. Again, find lax. <laughs> 
but let's make this bigger. So uh, instead of 40 by 40, let's make this 50 by 50. Now that's not enough just changing those numbers right there because right now everything was 40 by 40. Everything was, you know, nice and neat. There's a two pixel um, space between each one. So we need to kind of maintain that um, throughout this. And what that means is that the first button starts at zero, zero. It's always pretty much gonna be that way. And since I change this to 50, I wanna move 50 pixels over, but I'm also gonna give it a four pixel space between. So 50 pixels over plus four, whoops, is 54. 50 pixels, and we have to do this for the entire first row. We have to move all the buttons over because they're gonna overlap each other otherwise because now they're, now they're bigger than they were before. So add 50 to that, it's 104 plus four is 108. We add 50 to 108, we get 158 plus four is 162. I'm just breaking up the math very easy so you can understand that I'm adding uh, 162 plus 50 is 212, but we need that four pixel space. So 212 plus four is 216. 216 plus 54 is 270. And 270 plus 54 is 324. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not looking at the keyboard when I type. So 324 and um, so we're good on the spacing horizontally, but because we've also, got, we've also added some height to this, it means it's gonna push down into the second row. So now we have to adjust the second row. And because it's 50 plus four, I want to just add um, four pixels in there for the spacing. That means I'm gonna change every Y value in the second row to 54. That's gonna push the second row down 54 pixels but from here on forward, I'm not gonna change all these values, but from here on down, if we're pushing the second row down further, it's now gonna push into the third row, right? So you'll see this when I, when I export this. So when you edit the custom menu template, you can just save it and then come back into Iceboxer, export, it's gonna reread from the custom menu template and it's gonna make the changes that I just made. So you can see that I've made these buttons 50 by 50 with a four, space, with a four pixel space in between them. We've pushed the second row down four pixels, you know, 54 as well. So now that they don't overlap the first row, but as you can see, I've pushed them into the third row and each row is kind of pushed into each other at this point because they're using a height of 50. Now what this is also going to do is kind of screw up, it's gonna kind of screw up your modifiers because we've only adjusted the height of it. I mean, uh, yeah, we've only adjusted the height of it. So you kind of need to adjust the width uh, accordingly just play with the numbers and try to figure out what kind of fits good for you. It might look a little funny if you're scaling it, it might not. Um, I'm not sure, I haven't really tried to scale these up. The, the correct way to do this would be to just kind of figure out how big you need it via the scaling method. And then I would really recommend going back in and recreating all the images um, with the correct size. So if you're going to use 50 by 50, go ahead and as tedious as it is, recreate all the, um, all the, all the keys with the correct width and the correct height so that when you plug it all in, it just kind of works. Now there are two little bugs, two little bugs that I'm sure Lax is probably most likely working on a fix as we speak right now. Now I'm sure you noticed right away when this loaded up, there's these white edges. There's these white lines along the edge of these images. It's supposed to fade off into transparency, right? Now you can see I'm in DirectX 9. It says D3D9 over here for just to show that that's happening. I'm in DirectX 9 mode. Not every game has a choice between DirectX 9 and DirectX 11, but if you change to DirectX 11, these little, these white lines along the edge will disappear and it will render correctly. However, in DirectX 11, if you scale the buttons up, they do this weird flickering, blinking, flashing thing. And, I'll, and I'll, I'm not gonna show it here, but um, I'll just throw a little overlay up on the screen. It'll pop up to show what exactly I'm talking about. Um, it's, very, it's very annoying. So that's why I suggest that the absolute correct way to resize this menu is to not use the scaling method at the moment and kind of recreate the images with the correct size you want or suck it up and just use the sizes that I've already provided. So it's really up to you at this point. Um, 
But like I said, I'm, there, it may be fixed. By the time this video is out, it may be fixed. Maybe not. Who knows? But um, that's it. That's it. You're good to go. You are now the menu overlay, the keyboard overlay master. And you're good to go. Impress your friends. Impress your mates, your, your, your female friends, your male friends. Impress everyone. Impress your parents. Tell them you made this. Don't give me any credit. Tell them you made this. And they'll think you're making something yourself in real life. So with that said, <laughs> have fun with it. Show it off. Use it for streaming. Do something with it. Do something fancy. And uh, thanks for watching. And if you need any help, as always, the forum or the live chat, please, not the YouTube comments. I'm, I'm not going to give some big paragraph <laughs> answer in the YouTube comments. It really benefits everyone um, so much more if... Uh, questions and answers are handled on the forum, even the live chat, where other people can learn uh, the answers to some common issues. So with that said, again, thanks for watching and see you next time.